And back home, Parliament was told today that the CPF scheme has served Singaporeans well. But it is also timely to enhance retirement adequacy. Several MPs made this point today as they thanked the President for his address, charting the government's agenda for the second half of its term. Many MPs also spoke about the need to take care of the sandwiched class. Among the proposals thrown up, finding ways to reduce concerns over rising CPF minimum sums and reviewing property cooling measures to make it easier for more Singaporeans to upgrade their homes. Kicking off the debate on the president's address was MP for Chua Chu Kang GRC, Zaki Muhammad. He acknowledged that the government has acted to address some problems at hand, such as housing, health care, transport. But more needs to be done in the second half of the government's term. A major concern of Singaporeans is retirement adequacy. So MPs welcome the commitment to review the CPF system. We should also find ways to reduce citizens' unhappiness with the changing goalposts of the minimum sum amount. So much of the frustration I encounter minimum sum of retirement account after a certain age is due to inflexibility when one falls into the difficulty in using the CPF to pay for mortgage or change in property, especially if they've lost their jobs or be required to take a lower pay or have drawn up drawn down the CPF fully in their senior years. Mr Zaki suggested new ways to improve returns on CPF savings. He said this could be in the form of a government-backed investment plan that has higher interest rates and accounts for inflation. MP for Holland Bukit Timah GRC Liang Eng Hua also lauded the CPF system. If you do not have a CPF and you want to introduce it only today in 2014, I believe the proposal will likely be drawn up by a major uproar. But because we have the CPS system in place, and Singaporeans have seen that it has worked, we have the flexibility today of reforming the system one way or another to better meet the needs of the generation as well as that of the aging populations. One of the MPs who spoke on the needs of the middle class was Fumi Ha. Many of them feel that pathways upwards are constrained and that the budget announcements have little impact on their lives. Their aspirations to upgrade their quality of life, especially on the front on house and car, now feel further out of reach with the imposition of recent housing and car policies. So she suggested some property cooling measures be reviewed to make it easier for more Singaporeans to upgrade their homes. She said the additional buyer's stamp duty for one could be collected upon the completion of a new property rather than upfront, so genuine buyers not face cash flow constraints. And if a genuine upgrader sells his first flat within a certain period, Ms. Fu said he should not need to pay the additional stamp duty at all. Ensuring that the skills of PMEs remain relevant as the economy restructures was another recurring theme. MP Sunjia Patrick Tay suggests to expand the workforce skills qualifications framework to focus on PMEs and not just rank and work greater access to funds for adult learning. MPs also spoke about heart being at the center of government policies. They say it's no longer just about hardware and infrastructure, but the ability of the government to set policies to win the hearts and minds of an increasingly demanding electorate.